Okay, we're going to get started um, with uh, the county people didn't finish that quiz. I think I should go over it. Um, the, uh, before I begin, I wanted to ask just to see if we can do a quick poll. Um, I teach o, uh, two 0303 classes um, that are on Monday, Wednesday. You know who it is. You know who it is. Okay. Okay, so let's go through these real quick. The first one. Ooh. All right, well. Here's the first one. So, again, like I said last class, these substitution, integration, it's either the, the light's on or off. And if, when it's not on, it's, it's hell. So you're looking for something in its derivative x squared plus 5, the derivative of that is 2x. So if I let my substitution be uh, x squared plus 5, then the derivative of that, and I'll, I'll even put that with respect to x, would be 2x. Then what we did last time was we moved the dx to the other side. So now it's just a matter of matching things up. My 2x... My 2x dx is right there, right? So that's going to be replaced with a du. My u is dx squared plus 5, and so that's going to become a u to the negative 4. So my integral becomes, I'm moving quickly through this, integral u to the negative 4, and then du, exactly, right? So there's not even, I don't even have to scale anything, like multiply by 1 half or anything like that. It's just direct. This is a power rule. So this is where I do the antiderivative of x to the n is 1 over n plus 1, x to the n plus 1 plus a constant. Right? So this should be 1 over n plus 1, but not x, it's u, right? u to the n plus 1 plus a constant. And so you get 1 third, but it's negative because you had a negative 3 in the bottom. And then u to the negative 3 plus a constant. So negative 1 third. Now you have to switch back. What was u? x squared plus 5 to the negative 3 plus c. That's it. Questions? All right, the next one. I was hoping the next one would be real quick because I went through this whole thing last class of how to get like a general formula for any trig function. Remember, it was sine of uh, AX plus B or something like that, or right? Didn't I do that? Yeah, that's all I wanted. So anytime you have this, all you have to do is focus your attention on the number in front of X, which is pi, and make sure you scale by one over that. So it'll be 1 over pi, but then times the antiderivative of sine, which is negative cosine. So you would have had negative cosine of everything in there, plus a constant. And then, of course, that negative could come out. So negative 1 over pi cosine of pi x plus 1. Now, had you done substitution instead, then you would have made this as your substitution, u equals pi x plus 1, du equals what? Just pi dx, and you don't have pi dx up there, right? You divide by pi, so you could take this and become 1 over pi du equals dx. So now I start matching things up. My dx is this. My u is this whole thing in here. So the whole problem just gets rewritten what? Sine u. Integral sine u. And then dx is 1 over pi du. And then the 1 over pi comes out. Antiderivative of sine is negative cosine u plus a constant. And then replace your u with? Pi x, 
uh, pi x plus 1, so you get back that answer up there. Is that okay? All right, the last one I have to go to a new page for. Integral um, cosine square root x over square root x dx. So here, this problem would work out a lot easier if you realized that the square root of x on the denominator can be peeled off the side as a 1 over root x. And then just remembering that the derivative of square root of x is 1 over 2 root x, which is what I was saying last class. Try and remember that. Derivative of square root of x is 1 over 2 root x. So we make a substitution here. u is the square root of x. The derivative of that is then 1 over 2 root x dx. And I have dx, I have root x, I have 1, so I've got all that. I just don't have the 2, right? So I need to scale both sides, multiply both sides by 2. 2 du equals 1 over root x dx. Now I've got a perfect match, don't I? So, and the cosine, that's going to become what? U right there. The whole thing is the square root of x is the u. So what does my integral become here? Cosine u, 2 du. And that 2 will come out of the integral. I'm moving fast because we need to move on today. Cosine u, antiderivative cosine is sine. And what was u? Square root x. Okay, so you tell me, because there are a lot of people who didn't finish, what part of this hung you up? Finding the U or, I mean, what, what is it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah, yeah, okay, I see what you're saying. You replaced both the square root of x and the square root of x on the bottom with the u. Yeah, that would have caused some problems. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then things canceled. Yeah. 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 There's different ways. That's, I think I said that with substitution... Instructors present it different ways. Um, it just depends on who's showing it to you. So. I did not see you. It's like how you did it. Like I really finished it when I looked at it. But I just started to start like substituting random things. Okay. So what, 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 what is something you never substitute? What would you never choose for you? Never choose X. Okay. Never. Because all that will do is turn your problem into the exact same thing with the letter U instead of X. Yeah, never make that substitution, all right? So don't ever replace your whatever variables in the integral. Don't ever replace it with, you know, just a single variable. Just like U for X, T for U, you know, single variable for single variable. Don't ever do that because you're just going to wind up back at the same problem. And then the other thing is don't grab so much that your derivative is just crazy. So it's that fine balance. All right, well, you got to keep practicing, right? Sir, but I have a question. Uh-huh. Like when I substituted, I had uh, the square roots and u at the same time. Mm-hmm. And then I had the square root of x and the square root of x. Yeah, but things canceled. Yeah, things canceled. Yeah, so that's okay as long as they cancel. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now over homework, were there any questions over homework? Okay, what about the homework? I didn't bring my book today because I, I just grabbed, I got a bunch of calculus books and I just grabbed one off my desk today or off my bookshelf and I was going to just work some problems out of here today. No, just tell me what it is. It's fine. Ooh. Okay, so you got an answer, but you're having trouble going back to it? You don't have it? Okay. Which one? Four or five? Can you tell me what it is?
Okay. Who has a book? Just hand it to me. I think it'll be easier. I shouldn't have turned that down. Which, what number was it? Four or five? X, okay. Was this the one you were mentioning or no? Yeah, it's similar to it. Yeah, okay. This is a good problem to ask about. Um, okay, so looking at this, you're trying to look for a substitution, right? And there's not a whole lot to work with here. I mean, you can try... Well, what can you try? I mean, there's not just maybe the X minus one inside. What's it? Wait. Well, it's not the same thing. Watch what this is a critical problem to show you. Well, hold on. Let me let me first do this. I'm going to take the integral and I'm just going to make it an indefinite integral first. OK. I'm going to take the numbers off there so I can deal with those later, okay? I'm just going to go find the antiderivative first. So I'm going to choose my u to be as much as I can get without going crazy. So I'm going to try the x minus 1 to see where it takes me. This is not the same as letting u be x, and you'll see why here. If you take the derivative here, the right side is just 1, which is just going to give us the dx, right? So what I know is this, I can replace the x minus 1 right here, right, with u. I can replace the dx with my du. But the question is, what do I do with this x right here? You can take this equation right here, and you can solve it for x, can't you? Isn't that u equals x minus 1? So you can just add 1 to both sides and you would get this equation, u plus 1 equals x. Agreed? Now rewrite the integral. I'm replacing my x, replacing my x with what? u plus 1, and then multiplying that times the square root of the yellow, but my yellow is u, right? So square root u. And then du, that's what dx is. Now, why, yeah, why is this better than what we had? Let's look at this. I can distribute the square root through, right? And have, let's see, what's u times u to the one half? You'd have to, you have to add the exponents, right? So that's u to the one, uh, one, times u to the th one half, which is three halves, plus u to the one half d, oop, I forgot. Y'all see where my typo up there? I put x. Okay, sorry, that's an u. Is everyone okay with the fact that square root of u is u to the one half? And I distribute those through and the exponents add, okay? And what's good about that? Just split it into two and use power rule on each one. So this is going to turn into 1 over n plus 1, u to the n plus 1, plus the other one is 1 over n plus 1, u to the n plus 1 again, and then plus a constant. So I did both of them, power rule on both. So what is 3 halves plus 1? 5 halves, flip it over, 2 fifths, u to the 5 halves, plus 2 thirds, u to the 3 halves, plus a constant. So all I'm doing there is a little algebra, adding fractions, right? Reciprocating them. And then replace your u with? x minus 1. And you get 2 fifths x minus, whoop, x minus 1 to the 5 halves 
plus two thirds x minus one to the three halves plus a constant. That is the general antiderivative, right? But now we need to go back to the original problem, which was the definite integral, which means I need to evaluate that, that function right there at two different places. Any questions on this, though? Were any of the numbers? Yes. Uh, is there a reason why you really need to go to x? Where? Uh, oh, you mean as my substitution? OK, that's a good question. Why would I not have done up at this part right here, let u be square root of x minus 1? Here's why. Because the derivative of that is 1 over 2 square root of x minus 1. And I don't see the derivative of that sitting anywhere. I see it. I see the u there. But then its derivative creates complication, right? It creates something I don't have. That makes sense? OK. All right, so going back up, the original integral was, oh, I did write it down. OK, 1 to 2 x square root x minus 1 dx. This becomes the antiderivative, 2 fifths x minus 1 to the 5 halves plus 2 thirds x minus 1 to the 3 halves evaluated from 1 to 2. I don't need the C. No one has asked me why I don't need the C. Yeah, wh what happens if I had the plus C in there? Okay, so I plug in 2 first, right? I plug in 2 and I would have that C sitting there, right? Then I'd come through and I'd plug in 1, and I'd have that C sitting there, and I'd subtract them. So wouldn't the C's always cancel out? Wouldn't they always go away? So the C is actually there if you want, but it's gone as soon as you plug it in. I don't know if that helps, but for any of you who might have been like, well, why aren't we doing anything with that C? All right, so plug in 2 first. And then see what you get after that. So the good news, when you plug in 2, all the, the x minus 1s become 1s, right? 1 to any power is 1. So you just get 2 fifths plus 2 thirds. And the even better news, when you plug in z, uh, 1, you get zeros. Right? So it kills everything off. So your answer is... 16 fifteenths. That's it. Yes. Yes. What did you get as an answer? To the tenth? Yeah. Did you write the problem down right? Yeah. I'll have to look at it. That doesn't sound like the right antiderivative. Yes. Yes. Well, you can't combine those because they don't have the same powers on the U's. I don't know if that's what you mean. Yeah, I was thinking. It's, it, uh, if it was multiplication, yeah, that's what you would do. Yeah. But it's kind of like for the same thing, you can't do these two together, right? You can't make those two x to the fifth unless you're doing this. Then that's x to the fifth. Yes. 31. Now that's a good one. So integral sine 2x over 1 plus cosine squared x dx. Well, yes, it is, but you know, I'm sure there's many ways to get this one. Yeah. There, there's so many different options on this one, it, it, you know. Yeah. 
Let's do this. Since you're the one who asked, why don't you tell me what substitution you made? Okay, so I let cosine x equal to. Okay. Any reason why? Because I told everyone to make a substitution of something that you see its derivative there, but I don't see the derivative of that. Because there's a double angle on the top, right? That's correct. And okay, so let me point that out first. You recognize that the top, the sine 2x from pre-cal is 2 sine x cosine x. And then over 1 plus cosine squared x dx. So that's using the double angle identity, double angle identity from pre-cal. Sine 2x is 2 sine x cosine x. That, that identity is, is everywhere in math. Like you always see it. It always pops its head up. So it's one of those ones you should kind of have hardwired. Kind of like everyone has this one hardwired. Right? <laughs> All right. Just making sure it's hardwired. So that is hardwired as of one? Okay. But that one should, everyone should know that one, right? Pythagorean identity? Okay. So double angle identity for sine is one that is very useful to know also. And maybe you don't remember the double angle for cosine, but you should know it exists and you should know what page it's on on your formula sheet. There's three different versions. Okay, so uh, now if you do that, then you can see that if you pick cosine x as your u, then its derivative sine x is there. Okay, so now I'll proceed. The derivative of this is sine x, negative sine x, dx. That's the way you do it. I'm not going to do it that way. Okay, just not because I don't like you, but you know what I mean. I want to stay consistent to what I've been doing, which is I am trying to match pieces of what I get here up with pieces up there. So I'm taking my sine x. Uh, I'm use a different color here. I'm taking my sine x dx, and I'm saying I've got that same thing, sine x dx right here. So I can replace that blue sine x dx with negative du. The question is, can I replace everything else? Well, the cosine I can handle, right? That cosine right there is going to turn into a u, so that'll be a u squared. This up here will also be a u. And then the 2 is the 2, and the 1 is a 1. So let me go for it. This equals, uh, no, no, I'm switching variables, sorry. Uh, 2, I'm going to do the yellow first. u over 1 plus u squared, and then times negative du. Everyone see that? So I'll take out the constant and that negative, right? That okay? So this equals negative 2 integral u over, oh man, I should have left it in there, but it's okay. Okay, so yeah, now, now we're sitting at a new integral, new variables, and the question is, what's the antiderivative of that? Do you have a formula for that? I thought you had a formula for that. Uh, that's right. The formula is for 1 over 1 plus u squared, right? So I'm pointing that out. Just make sure, like, you got to know what you're looking for. That's real close to a formula except for that u on top. What formula is that? The arctangent one? Yeah, what number is that off there? 21? Okay, so that looks real close to 21 except for the u on top. So why not just factor the u out? Just take the u out of the integral. You can't do that. Right? No, you can't pull the variable that you're trying to integrate with respect to out of your integral. I, I only ask that because I see it happen. You know, you can't do that. You can't split it into two products, right? Because integrals don't work that way. So we have we're faced with, well, what do you do? Try another substitution. So how about letting the whole denominator be our substitution? Because what is the derivative of one plus u squared? 
two U, and you have a U on top, don't you? And you have the DU. So I'm going to leave the two out there. It won't matter. Um, I'll use V equals 1 plus U squared. The derivative of V is then 2U what? 2U DU. Do I have 2U DU? No, I just have U DU. So I need to get rid of the 2, so I multiply both sides by 1 half. Which is going to cancel the two that I pulled out earlier, which is why I said earlier I shouldn't have pulled that two out, but it won't matter. It's just constants, multiplication. So that's what my UDU is going to be replaced with. I've got my V is going to be here, so I'm ready to make a substitution. So now my new integral becomes the negative 2 out front integral of so that that u du is going to be replaced with one half dv right i don't i don't like to ever put my db on top of a fraction i always like it out on the side so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a 1 over what is 1 plus u squared that's just v and then here's my times 1 half dv. Questions? I'm going to pull the one half out. It's just going to become negative integral 1 over v dv. The antiderivative of 1 over v is natural log. So minus natural log absolute value of v plus a constant. Now replace what V is. So now we're going back. Negative natural log. V was 1 plus U squared plus a constant. But U was what? Cosine. So it should be negative natural log absolute value 1 plus cosine squared X Plus, that, plus C. And we're not done, right? It was a definite integral or was it not? No, it wasn't? It was indefinite? Okay. Okay. Hold on. Was there another? I thought I heard another question. Some, did you say you did that a different way? No? Did you say you did this one a different way? Okay. Yeah, the derivative one would be, well, no, because that would work. Because look, you would have, if you were to, so we're, we're going to revisit, we'll revisit the problem. That's why I asked you, because I, I knew there was more than one way to do this. Okay, look, this is just to go, go to show you. Sometimes there's a different path, and sometimes that path is easier. Sometimes it's not. Okay, look, if you choose the denominator, the whole denominator as your u, Then the derivative of this is, well, the derivative of 1 is 0, right? Hold on, hold on. The derivative of cosine squared x, you take care of the squared part, right? It's chain rule. The squared is happening. So anything squared, derivative 2 comes out. 2 times whatever was there to the first power now, right? Cosine the first. Now the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine x, and that's it. We're done with chain rule. So I'll clean it up. Negative 2 of what? Cosine x, sine x? Yeah, let's do sine x, cosine x, dx. And holy shit, look at that. Oh, pardon me. Sorry. I, I just got a bad. We had, a, we had a get together this weekend. We had no kids in the house. A bunch of adults came over. So like, I was able to like just get all my all my badness out with no kids around we actually made it a point because everyone there had kids we were like tonight 
We're going to get every bad word out of our mouth. It was, it was pretty bad, too. <laughs> okay, so check that out. You see that? Look, two sine x, cosine x, right? There's your double angle backwards. And now your D. Oh, yeah, it works. So now you have, you have your sine 2x dx on top, right? But you're off by sine. So move the negative to the other side. If I rewrite the integral this way, then the negative will come out. Yes? Oh, this right here? No, this will all be posted. What I'm doing right now. Yeah. Um, so the negative comes out. That whole sine 2x dx, that's your du, right? So that's du. And then you had 1 over the whole bottom. The whole bottom was u. So that's just then the antiderivative of that is natural log u. So you get negative natural log u plus a constant, and then replace u with 1 plus cosine squared x. Same thing. Faster, but maybe not as natural. It, so it, you know, it just depends. I mean, sometimes you take a swing at it, and you spin around, fall on the ground, and then the other time you knock it out of the park. So, but you got to try. It's what I keep telling you. You got to keep trying. Mm-hmm. What property? Yeah. Well, are you saying that when you see cosine squared x and someone asks you to take derivative, yeah. that you need to be looking at that as cosine x, like that whole thing squared? Is that what you're talking about or no? No, no, I'm saying that, that, that should be a property. Oh. Yeah, could be. I mean, you would have a whole hell of a lot of properties, though, if you started taking every one of them and start making formulas out of them, you know? Yes. How, how would I get from here to here if I didn't know the formula? I wouldn't. Wait a minute, how did I get from, I took the derivative of this to get this. Right. Then I, I just clean things up. Yeah. But to know that that yellow turns into the blue, well, sorry, that that yellow turns into this is a property. And if I didn't know that property, I wouldn't, I wouldn't get there. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you, if you didn't know that property, you would actually just be like, well, I don't know, okay. you know? Yeah. All right, um, let's move on. We're going to do more substitution today because there's never, you can never see too much substitution. We have a test. Our first exam is a week from this Thursday. So we're going to meet again on Thursday. We're going to meet again on Tuesday. Then we have a test. The good news is this. The test is only supposed to cover through 6-1. That means this section we're doing right now is 5-5. Five, five. The next section we cover is 6-1. 6-1 is called integration by parts. You're going to need a good two days solid on integration by parts. So I'd like to start it today so we can at least see it. And so I want to do more substitution, but we only have 40 minutes. So let me do about maybe a problem or maybe two more problems of substitution. And then I want to get to integration by parts. Okay. Okay. Um. I'm, I wanted to pull some problems out of a different book today so that we have some variety. Where was the one? that one I wanted. Where is it? There it is. Okay. So let's check this out. This is substitution as well? This is substitution still. Integral x over x minus 4 
to the third dx. Do you see anything in its derivative? x minus 4, what's the derivative of x minus 4? dx, so you have that, right? But you also have an x up there, so let's see what happens. Can you split the x minus 4 cube? What do you mean split it? Like make a, uh, x minus 4 to the second power is um, x minus 4, and then make x minus 4. Uh, I'm not sure we'll need that much complication of it. Let's, let's see where this initial x minus 4 takes us. The derivative of this will be just dx, as we said. So let me highlight what we've got covered. The x minus 4 is going to be replaced with u. The dx is going to be replaced with du, right? The only thing we have to address is the what? What's still up there I haven't touched? The x. So what can you do with the x? Take this equation right here, solve it for x. We just did one like this a second ago. This is going to be one of our little tricks in our box of tricks. Okay. Anytime you have the variable still sitting there stuck, you can just pull it out. You know, solve. If you have it in the equation, you can solve for it always. So go ahead and uh, solve that. U plus four equals x. So that's what I'll replace my x with. So I have the entire integral covered, don't I? So let's rewrite it. The green becomes the u plus 4. The denominator becomes what? u cubed. And the dx becomes du. Now, why do I like that compared to what I had before? You can split it, right? You have two terms over a single denominator. So you can split that into two fractions, right? It becomes u over u cubed plus 4 over u cubed du. And of course, u over u cubed is just 1 over u squared. And then this one's just 4 over u cubed, du. And those are both powers of u, right? They're not natural log. It's only natural log if it was u on the bottom, not u squared. So I'm going to bring the u squared up, make it u to the negative 2, bring the u cubed up, make it u to the negative 3. And then I will apply what? Power rule. So this is where you're going to do the 1 over n plus 1, u to the n plus 1, right? So we should get negative u to the negative 1. Let's see, what's this next one? Negative 8, u to the negative 2. Are you talking to me or are you talking to... Oh, I'm not even paying attention. I thought y'all were talking to each other. Is this right or not? Four? We'll take a vote. You need, when you take the derivative of it, you should get back what's up, what's up there. So what's it got to be? I'm trying to avoid having to show all the detail. Is this good or no? We happy with that? Okay. Plus C? All right. Now, replace U with X minus 4. And we're there, right? All 
Oh, why am I dot, dot, dot? This was a def indefinite integral. And you could always check it by taking derivative. That was just to illustrate that property again that you can always solve for one of your variables in your equation. Here's one that's somewhat interesting, I think. Uh, integral natural log square root t over t dt. What do you want u to be? The, the, the whole thing, natural log of t? Yeah, okay, I'm going to go with that. You, you want the you want this to be u. Is that correct? Yeah. Then the derivative of that is the derivative of natural log of something is 1 over it, right? 1 over that something times the derivative of what was there? What's the derivative of what's inside that natural log? 1 over 2 root t dt, right? Yeah, see, because of the square root, yeah. Is this okay? Do you all see that? What does that become? What is du here? What's square root of two t what is the square root of t times square root of t on the bottom here? That's just two t on the bottom, isn't it? One over two t dt. Is that what you have? Look, I mean we have the natural log of the square root of t on top, right? So we got all that. Yeah, you know, the only thing left is the dt over t, which you have dt over t right here. So you just don't want the two on the bottom there. So multiply both sides by two. So this worked, actually. It's not the way I saw it, but it worked. Multiply both sides by 2. 2 du equals 1 over t dt. I'm ready to rewrite the integral. The yellow gets replaced with what? U. U? The dt over, dt over t gets replaced with 2 du, and I can pull the 2 out. What's the antiderivative of u? Uh, u, to u? u to the second over 2, okay. right? Over yep, so it's going to be, I'm going to put 1 half u squared plus a constant. The 1 half and the 2 cancel, so you just get u squared, don't you? Mm -hmm. Plus a constant. And u in this problem is the natural log of the square root of t. So all of that, I'm just going to put in brackets, squared plus c. Does that one make sense? Kind of? I could keep going all day, but at some point I have to stop. So I'm trying to pick one. Hmm? Well, mm, 35, split it into two integrals. One over the denominator and then x over the denominator. One over denominator is a formula. X over denominator is a u substitution. Just make u be 1 plus x squared. Oh, no. I'm not saying always do that. But it's like when you look at a problem, it's got to be like this Rolodex of ideas going through your mind about what you can and can't do to it, you know? And it's just a matter of like, does it make sense to do what I just said? You know? There it does. Another problem may not make, it may not, may not help. 
But if you split that one, he's referring to number 35 at a 5.5. If you split that into two integrals, it's very simple that way. So, Okay, I think this will be the last one, and then we'll get into integration by parts. But trust me, with integration by parts, substitution's not going away. It's still going to be there. So we'll get more practice with it. Uh, how about integral dx over x square root x to the fourth minus 1. Okay, you want to let x to the fourth minus 1 be u, but then the derivative of x to the fourth minus 1 is what? 4x cubed? I don't see a four, I don't see an x cubed anywhere. Do you? Okay, so we could try it. We could try it. But I'm just thinking out loud here. I don't see the derivative of 4x or x to the fourth minus 1. I don't see the derivative of it there. You could look at you could look at the x to the fourth as being x squared squared. And then the derivative of x squared is 2x, which you have an x, but where is that x? In the denominator. And remember I said you don't ever want your derivative to ever wind up in the denominator because then your d, your du will be in the denominator. It needs to be up top. There is a substitution that'll work, but there's also some magic we've got to do before we can do it. Hmm? Well, yeah, how though? I'm listening. Okay. How about I show you? Because I, I think this is one of those ones where you just have to see it for that first time and know that you can do this now. What is it that I really wanted to have up top that wasn't there? When, when you were saying choose x to the fourth minus 1, you really wanted to have x cubed, didn't you? So I'm going to make x cubed appear like this. Now, the rest of the problem, I'm going to keep the same. But you can't do that, right? You can't just throw an x cubed in there. But I can divide by x cubed at the same time. And now I've thrown a 1 in there. Now I haven't changed the problem, have I? Have I? And even better than that, what is x to the cubed times x on the bottom going to be? x to the fourth, which I'm about to make a substitution that's going to involve x to the fourth anyway, right? Let's just see where the hell this takes us, okay? Let's just see what happens. So now I'm going to try this. And I, I'll tell you right now, I told you, I, I brought this book because I wanted, I wanted to pull a problem that I haven't done so that we can all work with, through this together. I don't know if this is going to work, but that's the instinct that I have from my experience doing this, is to make that x cubed appear. Let's see what happens. x to the fourth minus 1. What's the derivative here? 4x cubed dx. Now, remember what I said. You do not want to replace your, you don't want to ever throw your du into the denominator. So I do not want to be going right now, ah, x cubed, x cubed, there it is. No, because then your du is downstairs. You don't want it. But what I will say is that I do have x cubed dx in the numerator, which is what I was hoping for. I just don't have the 4 there, do I? So I can multiply both sides by 1 fourth to get it out of here. So 1 fourth du is equal to x cubed dx. So that's going to be my straight substitution of, of the x cubed dx. Now let's look at the bottom. What do we have on the bottom? The x to the fourth minus 1 right there, I can replace that with u, can't I? 
But what about the x cubed times x? That's x to the fourth, which I can, good, which I can come here and I can solve this. x to the fourth equals u plus one, doesn't it? Okay. So let's try and rewrite this integral. Integral. My x cubed, I'm highlighting some stuff here, x to the fourth, that's this. My x cubed dx turns into what? One fourth du, so I'm gonna pull the one fourth out, I'm gonna throw the du in the back. Then I'll have one over, what is my x to the fourth, that green stuff there, what's that x to the fourth gonna be? U, u plus one? And then the square root of u. Yes? Y'all agree with that? Well, yeah, we we have a problem though. This is we have we have an issue here. It doesn't work as clean as it may appear to be. But I want to make sure everyone's with me on this though, up to this point. We're okay? Okay, so now at this point, you could distribute the square root of u through and get u to the 3 halves plus u to the half du. You could do that? You could also what? You could move them both up as negative or one of them up, yep. But you can't split this up. You cannot split this up into two. And so you cannot use the power rule. So we are not there. You see that? We're not there. You can't, yeah, well, if, if you bring them to the top, then you're going to have this integral one fourth here. You would have u minus one to the negative one. And you'd have what? u to the negative one half. But even after. Well, no, even after. You can't distribute that u through now on top because of the negative one power. You can't. Maybe another substitution will work. Maybe. Let's see. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come and erase some of this because I know this I was kind of stuck. Can we shut the door, please? All right. So what do you want to try for a substitution? You got to pick something in its derivative. What's that? Okay, let's try let's try this. I don't see the derivative of square root of u though. How about u plus 1? How about u plus 1? What we're doing, like I said, this problem I didn't work before class because I, I really want you to see this is what it takes, all right? I'm pretty sure we're going to have to go back to the beginning of the problem. Pretty sure. But this might work. Let's see what happens. The derivative of this would be what? du. Okay. Now what? So one fourth integral one over u plus one is v, and the square root of u would be square root v minus one du. Uh, dv, yeah. Which is pretty much what we started with. Do we have a formula for that? Do we have a formula for this? Hmm. Mm. No. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So we don't have that formula. So we are, I mean, it looked like we were headed somewhere, right? Making that thing appear. This right here, where was it? This x cubed over x cubed. Right? 
So let's try something slightly different in the problem, just slightly different, okay? So what am I gonna do? What I would expect you to do, start over. What's that? I, I think we were stuck. We were stuck because we couldn't, there's no more substitutions we could have made that would have, clean, that would have made that work out easy. It was all right. Yeah. It's just we couldn't figure out that antiderivative of that. Yes. X squared minus one. We didn't have X squared. Okay, so you're you're talking back here now. Yeah. Okay, that's where I'm headed. That's exactly where I'm headed. Hold on. Okay, let's go back to this now. No, because you have that you. You have x squared squared. Yeah, we have to we have to let our u be x squared. We're gonna head to that formula. We just can't go straight to it here. We're gonna hope for that. Let's so all we've done now is we've let u be x, I mean not let u, we've replaced the x to the fourth with x squared squared. Okay? Keeping in mind some of those formulas for inverse trig functions for antiderivatives. Now let me make a substitution. U is equal to x squared. What's the derivative of u? 2x dx. Do we have 2x dx? We can make it appear, right? We can make a 2x dx appear. To do it, though, we're going to have to do this. Well, what are we going to have to do? You tell me. To make it... To make it Okay, I can do a 2x on top, and then rewrite the whole problem. Here's my x, here's my root, x squared, squared minus 1 dx. But now I need to introduce the 2x I just threw up top, right? So there's my, there's my magic. So what can be replaced now? 2x dx will be replaced with du, right? My x squared here will be replaced with u. And this x squared will be replaced with u. Very similar to what we just did, isn't it? Very similar. So let's rewrite the integral. Um, and the twos cancel, don't they? Right, those twos cancel. So how does what does my integral become here? Du over, or I'll just put one over. No, hold on, we need to deal with this. We're replacing exactly the yellow two x dx with what? Du. So that 2 on the bottom is still there, okay? It's not going anywhere. If we're going to take the whole 2x dx as du, okay, so we're going to have 1 over, here's my du. That replaces the yellow. Now on the bottom, I still have 2. The x squared is the green. That's u. Square root u squared minus 1. There we go. Now that looks uglier than what we had before, but look at your formula sheet. Pull out the one half here. You have a formula for this here. What number is it? 23. Number 23. The antiderivative of that should be what? So secant inverse of u plus a constant. 
Okay? And then what's u? X squared. Questions? Yes. Oh yeah, we just can't do it yet. I'm I'm gonna prove I can prove any of these formulas to you, but just not yet because the only thing we know how to do right now is substitution. So we need more techniques, and once you get the other techniques, you can see how to do something like this. Yeah. Okay, it's kind of like um, with L'Hopital's rule. You learn L'Hopital's rule. They didn't teach you L'Hopital's rule before they taught you derivatives. You had to learn derivatives so you could use L'Hopital's rule. And then you use L'Hopital's rule to do limits. So it's, it's kind of like you need that before you can do this. You need, some, you need more techniques. And that leads us perfectly into the next technique. This is five, six? Five, six. No, wait, six, one, sorry. Now, this is our first section in chapter 6. They consider this to be the first technique of integration. But substitution is really a technique. So I look at this one as being our second technique. Integration by parts. Now, integration by parts, it's actually pretty interesting where this formula comes from. All right? Because it is a formula. It's, look at this idea here. Let's say that I'm going to call u equals some function of x. And I'm going to say that v is some other function of x, g of x. So u is a function of x and, and v is a function of x. Okay? Two functions. Sine and x squared. Right? Doesn't matter. Tangent and cosecant. Just two functions. Two different functions. Now, watch what this is. If I take u times v, and I ask you from Cal 1 to find the derivative, what, what would you tell me? What's the derivative of their product? Uh, derivative of x. u prime yeah. v plus v prime u, right? So u prime means, really, in this picture, u prime is the derivative of f, right? And v prime is the derivative of g. Do you all agree with this? Now, it does, it's okay if I were to switch the order, right? I mean, multiplication doesn't matter. I could flip, just flip the two. So that's okay still. All I did was put the derivatives in the back and the other functions in front. Now, the left side is still this. Okay. Now, from here, what I'd like to do is I'd like to take the antiderivative of both sides. The antiderivative of both sides of this equation. So what's the antiderivative of u times v derivative? And then what's the antiderivative of the whole other side? So let's, let's write it down first, then we'll talk about it. Yes. For the left part, what I'm saying is, yeah, exactly. On the left side, what I'm saying is, take u times v, take its derivative, then undo that. Yeah. So isn't the left side just uv? Yes, u times v. On the right side, though, I'm not actually going to undo anything. I'm going to leave it. I mean, I have to leave the integral sign. And I'm going to split it into two integrals. That I can use because properties of integrals, right? Is that okay? So on the left side, I actually took the antiderivative. See, I'm taking the antiderivative of the derivative. They undo each other. It's like nothing happened. And then the right side, these integrals are there, but I'm not, I'm not asking you to, to figure out what they are. 
Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to take one of these integrals. Uh, nope, wrong one. I'd like to take this integral right here. And I'd like to move it to the other side of the equation by subtracting it. I can do that, right? It's an equation. I can move things around by adding and subtracting. So I get uv, that's u times v, minus integral v u prime equals integral u v prime. <coughs> Everyone okay with that? Now all I'm going to do is just, I'm not really rewriting I'm just changing the order. I'm flipping over the equal sign. So whatever's on the right side is now on the left. Whatever's on the left is now on the right. This, I'll box this because this is the first form of the integration by parts formula. You'll see. You'll see. That's, that's the formula for integration by parts. I'm showing you where it comes from, and then we're gonna, I'm going to show you how to use it. It's going to be great. Uh, so let's see what this is saying. I mean, I need to kind of scroll down here. Leave that up there. I'm going to start a new. I'm going to go back in terms of um, what u and v were. u was what? In the beginning, u was the function of x, right, f of x, and v was g of x. Okay, so what this says here, what this whole thing says is this. Let's say you're trying to find an integral, right? And let's say you have u, which is some function of x. And next to it, being multiplied, is v prime. v prime is the derivative of some other function, g, right? Yes? Now, I'm putting a little dx here because when you take the derivative of g with respect to x, chain rule says then dx, dx is usually 1. So that's my u prime is actually g prime x dx. That that should be equal to what? Look at my formula. u times v, which is what? f of x times g of x, no derivatives, minus the integral of g of x times the derivative of f of x dx. This is the next form. It's just another way of writing the same thing. So let me try and stress this to you the way that the man who taught me this formula did somehow many years ago. The way that this formula works is that you're going to look at an integral. You're going to look at an integrand. And it's going to be something you can't figure out with substitution. It's something you can't figure out with any power rule and you're sitting there and you're stuck. Then what you look for is a function and not its derivative but some other function's derivative. So these ha don't even have to be related to each other. It's some function sitting there, cosine. And then something over here that is the derivative of some other function. And if you can do that and isolate the integ integrand into two separate distinct things like this, then you can convert it into a new problem where your new integral is doing what? What is, what is the difference between this integral and that integral? And this one, the first one, you have f sitting there, right? Over there, what do you have? It's derivative. And over here, you have the derivative of something sitting here. And over there, it's its what? It's its antiderivative. So f, which was just sitting here, it's now got the derivative on it. And then what g is here, it's now the antiderivative. So it's called integration by parts can be looked at as being um, a process of transferring a derivative. Transferring it off, off, well, sorry, on to f, right? We're transferring the derivative onto f, and we're transferring the derivative off of g. You see that? And that new integral 
can sometimes be easier to do than this one. All right? As we're going to see. But that's what it is. We're transferring a derivative. I, I mean, I don't know. That, this is a really great formula. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you a way real quick to memorize it so you don't have to always have it written down. Uh, going back up to this one in black, I'm going to write it in blue right underneath. And I'm going to just change it just a little bit. U, uh, U, I'm going to write dV instead of V prime, okay? dV, derivative of V instead of V prime, equals UV minus integral V, and instead of U prime, write DU. Do you see that that blue formula is pretty much the same thing? Okay, the way that I, uh, I think someone taught me this a long time ago, to remember that, is to use the words ultra violet minus voodoo. I don't know if that's the way you spell voodoo, but I think it's right. Is that the way you spell V-O-O-D-O-O -O -O or V-O-O-D? I don't care. Hmm? Good enough? Okay. Ultra violet minus voodoo. Do you see? Ultra violet minus voo, right? Do. Do you see it? Ultraviolet minus voodoo. It, trust me, it sticks. If you remember that, it'll stick, all right? So your integral becomes ultraviolet minus voodoo. You ready to see this thing work? We only have four minutes. Okay, here we go. Integral. X. Oh, yeah, x sine x. Let's do this, dx. All right, this integral looks pretty innocent, doesn't it? Like, eh, you know, it's just x and sine x, big deal. Yes, by themselves, everyone here knows the antiderivative of x. Everyone here knows the antiderivative of sine. Great. Problem is you can't split it into two integrals because there's multiplication, right? So as innocent as it looks, you can't do anything with this. Make a substitution. Try anything you want. Not going to work. Okay? Just not going to work. So you'd be stuck in this infinite, infinite loop, and you just... Okay, so now integration by parts. What I need to do now, and this is where the real thinking has to come in, I need to look at this integrand and see a function, f, or I'm going to call it u instead, and then some other function, v, but it's actually its derivative, v prime. So do you see something in its, and then something else's derivative? So what are, what are some ways we could look at it? How about if I look at this as being my um, u, and then the other part, everything, as being the derivative of v? I could do that, right? If this is u and the other one is the derivative of something, then you need to be able to tell me in the formula, ultraviolet minus voodoo, voodoo looks like this, right? That's voodoo. That's voodoo. Can you, from these two things, tell me those two things? So can you tell me what u prime is if this is u? What's u prime over there? A one, isn't it? Can, if this is v prime, What's V then? What's the antiderivative of sine? Negative cosine. So you mean to tell me that if I do it this way, that my new integral over here is going to have a negative cosine and a one? So just cosine by itself? Right? That's pretty easy integral, isn't it? Now let me, let me try and... Um, see what would happen had we chose it the other way. What if we had said, okay, I'm going to use the sine as my u and then use the x dx as my v prime. Then over in the new integral, voodoo integral, I would need, let's see, what would I have over here? The antiderivative of v. What's the antiderivative of v? It would be 1 half x squared. So I'd have 1 half x squared over there, wouldn't I, in my new integral? 
But I would also need u prime in that integral. And what's u prime in that integral? Cosine. cosine. So my new integral would have x squared and cosine x. Doesn't that seem even more complicated than what I have to start with? Yeah. Do you all see the difference between choosing them? That's, that's critical in these problems because the way you choose u and v is going to dictate how easy it's going to be or how hard it's going to be. That's pretty much the rule of thumb. W the way I look at it is this way. I'm just trying to get you to see it right now. We'll actually go through a formal process. When I look at that, I say, one of those I'm going to take the derivative of, and one of those I'm going to take the, the antiderivative of. The one I'm going to take the derivative of, the u, I want it to get nice when I take its derivative. I want it to go away if possible. And actually, the x will just turn into a 1. And the other one, when I go backwards with it, I want, to be, I want it to be something I can go backwards with. So we're out of time. Yeah. Well, yeah, so I don't have enough time to set this one up. That's where we'll pick up next class. So your homework is pretty much, I already gave you all the homework. So how about if you haven't done the evens, do the evens, you know? Has anyone done both odd and evens and want more problems? Because I've got more problems. I can, I'll be happy to share. Okay, if anyone needs more substitution problems for practice, let me know. If not, do the evens. But do them. Hmm? Tomorrow, me too. 9.30 till 11. And then, yeah, I've got classes from 11 till... Till two, and then I'm there from two to like three, three thirty. Are you free during that time? Yes, sir. Yeah, I can probably leave.